Hey, what is going on, everyone? This is Tam Pham from BotAcademy.com. And today we have a very special guest, my good friend, Josh Fector. Uh, Josh is the founder of Banff Media and also the community leader of Badass Marketers and Founders. Josh, welcome. Yeah, thank you for inviting me. It's awesome to be here. I mean, do you remember the first time we met? It was like a couple of years ago um, when you were just getting started with entrepreneurship. And now, like, fast forward, well, I don't know if you're just getting started, but you, like, you didn't have this community. You didn't have this agency. You didn't have even a messenger chatbot. And now, fast forward uh, a few years later, I'm really like, proud and also like, amazed to see your progress and momentum. Yeah, it's sort of interesting. I was actually a big fanboy of yours because you're doing all this community development like with the <laughs> hustle at the time. And I was always interested in starting a community. And the only person that was actually like doing it at the time was you to some degree, right? There's other people, but there it's more like those network marketing groups you were doing on a very real level of like entrepreneurship and like helping founders. So I was like, ah, what is Tam doing? Like this guy knows what's up. (laughs) (laughs) Well, that's awesome. Well, thank you for that. I didn't know about, I didn't know that you felt that way. So thank you. Uh, No problem. Awesome. Well, today we're talking about messenger chatbots because you've taken a huge like leap into prioritizing messenger chatbots. I've seen you release some books and some guides, um, and you have the lead magnet go in through messenger or Facebook messenger. I've also seen all of your broadcast messages you send out. It's very personal, very, um, like helpful. And you come in a very human way as well. Um, I'm just curious what got you into messenger um, chatbots and why did you prioritize that over like an email list, for example? Well, we had a pretty sizable email list at the time. I think it was around 5,000 people. And whenever we sent an email, we wouldn't get any responses. I mean, I would say like, hey, respond, you know, with X or whatever it may be. And I noticed that when I just posted on Facebook, I would get more responses there. I said, there's something seriously wrong with email. Like, why don't people respond? And it, it just hurt me because you have like all these quote unquote experts saying, build your list, build your list. And I was like, that's what I'm doing. I'm not getting any results. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd put in so much effort into like this email list. And I was even doing like paid spend on it, like out of my own pocket at the time. And I was working for companies too. So just trying to like get that separation, become an entrepreneur. And I thought my email list would help me. And it was a complete opposite. It was really a waste of time. Um, wow. And why I jumped into messenger was, um, I think I had done, I had done a giveaway in my group and I got 200 people on and I sent out a broadcast and I saw it was 96% open rate and it was around like a 60% click through rate. I was like, <laughs> and I was like, Whoa, like it was just like mind blowing to me because my emails were receiving around a 33% open rate and maybe like a 4% click through rate. Hmm. And I was just really upset at about that. I was like, this does not make any sense to me. Like, why am I even wasting time with this? Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, well, you know, if you are going to choose messenger, you're going to do what you do best, which is just quadruple down on it. Right. Mm-hmm. And so that's what I did. I just completely defocused off my email list. And then it's like, how do you ramp up your messenger list? And then actually it's way easier than actually building your email list, which is great. <laughs> mm-hmm. We can dive into that more. I'm just to give people context. Like, what are some of the things that you you send out um, through Messenger or through email, even? And I guess what was your what's kind of your business goal behind all this? Yeah, I mean, well, it always comes back to our why. Like, we want to empower a million founders. Mm. So the reason we stick with our why is because it actually attracts us more clients and more business in the long run. We found that when we openly state our why, we'll attract organizations that deal with founders. Like one of our clients is called Founders Foundation. We actually just got off the phone with them and they're based in Germany and they want to become like the Y Combinator of Germany. And they like us because like you guys want to empower founders too. Like this is awesome, right? Um, And that makes perfect sense. And then another one of our clients we had dinner with last night, that's his mission, his personal mission to empower a million founders, five-time founder and sold five companies. And just because of that why, he's aligned with us. Uh, so we stick to that. We're not trying to sell anything like via messenger. What we think is that we give enough value and if it's that people will naturally like come to us and it'll help create that brand awareness. Now, like they go to our blog post via messenger. We do have a pop-up using like autopilot. It's a little heads up that says, Hey, if you do want to work with us, like click here. 
Mm. Um, but we're not sending them to directly to a sales page. And there's honestly no need to because we're in the business of services and our average deal size is around like $70,000. We're, if we send people to directly to a sales page, they're not going to convert. <laughs> this makes no sense, right? Yeah. And our average um, sales cycle is around a month and a half. So we just try to give as much value as possible. And that's the only way to get people to convert. It's sort of like, there's no clear direction, right? You can't say if I have this crazy nurture flow, then they're going to convert here and pay me 70 K doesn't work like that at all. Mm -hmm. Um, so we just use it to give people value in that for us. And that for them is the most tactical guides on how to take like their startup to the next level or whatever that means. Maybe that's doing, um, writing on LinkedIn, writing viral content there, drive more traffic to their website. Maybe it's building a membership subscription and everything that we put out is always case studies on stuff we've done mm -hmm. and it helps create our brand because it's case studies that we've done, not other people. Right. So they're like, wow, these people know how to build a membership community. I want a membership community. Let me talk to them. And we actually had a lead come in today who said that because we released, um, a post yesterday that is like how to build a subscription membership community. And she reaches out and we have never talked on Facebook ever. She ignored like my last two messages. <laughs> and then she's like, I love that post that has everything to do with what I want. Like, uh, we should work together. I was like, this is what's up. <laughs> wow. So. I, I feel like in both ways, email and messenger, you're giving value, but in messenger, people are actually responding and actually engaging with whatever you're sending. And it seems um, from, from what I've seen from your broadcast, it seems very personable. And you also mentioned before uh, we talked that your team or you respond to almost all messages you come in through. Is that right? A hundred percent. So uh, my team responds to around 90%. I respond to around 10% and it helps scale my time really effectively. And we have to be very wary because we do have a lot of leads come in through messenger that say, Hey, like um, we're interested in working with you. And it's a bit hard because they're not necessarily vetted when they reply. So you do have to like look into a LinkedIn profile, whatever it may be, and vet them from sort of a bird's eye view that way. Right. Mm -hmm. And it, sometimes it works really well. Sometimes you get on the phone with people who can't afford your services, but at the same time, I mean, there's still leads coming in and a lot of them are valuable. Mm, I see. So let me get this right. Do you use messenger to build an audience to get people to engage, give value, give value, give value. And then on the back end, you have um, your team responding to each person to see uh, if people want to work with you or people want to just give you feedback or like how things are going with, with the guides. Is there anything else that you're doing with messenger chatbots that we haven't not covered yet? Yeah. So one of the things is actually growing my list and we figured out a way to grow my list every single month. And a lot of it comes down to, we thought blog posts would be it, putting these like e, these messenger buttons on blog posts, <laughs> pop-ups, whatever it was. And that led to very low subscriber growth. Oh. And at the end of the day, what worked for us was releasing books on product hunt because product hunt, the people that visit there already know what messenger is. We're not re-educating them. They're already early adopters. So when they see that messenger button, they're not afraid of it. They're like, oh, I get it. You know, and they actually find it cool. They're like, these people know what they're doing. And that's what I hear all the time. They're like, I really love that you had a messenger button. Like, <laughs> that was like and that's after opting in, like who says that? Did, <laughs> actually said like, I really love that you had an email op. <laughs> Nobody's ever said that, right? I um, love it when you popped up right in front of when I was reading the article. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So funny. Um, and then through just releasing on product hunt, we can get around 5,000 subscribers every single time. No way. 5,000, so 5,000 subscribers. Our really? first, our first book got us, I think 7,000. So that was huge. All of a sudden we were like, Whoa, that just happened. Did you release it as a book or a product? Like a, app? Uh, so we released it as it was just an ebook. Hmm. The difference is that our eBooks are very in trend. So they're all about growth hacking and it's like you get them now or, or you won't get value from them later because a lot of tactics will be outdated in like six months. Right. Hmm. And we play to the product hunt audience, which is people who love startups and growth hacking. So it works very well for us and we're probably going to release another several books. It's, and that to me, it was just this big aha. I was like, 
wow, that works better than anything else. Uh, and we can build our list probably to around 25,000 people, hopefully in the next you know, three to four months, just releasing books on product hunt. Oh, wow. So are you at like 12,000 right now because seven plus five? Yeah. So we're at 12,000 right now. Um, a little bit less cause we do have people who unsubscribe. Ah, those people that kill me. <laughs> that's very normal. That, that's a good thing. I think <laughs> it is a good thing. Um, so, but yeah, I think we'll get, hit 25,000 pretty quickly and that's super exciting. And honestly, I would have never thought that we could hit. And if you look at the time span when we first started with our messenger list, which was around four months ago. And if we have 25,000 people and let's say the next three months, you're talking about seven months to build a 25,000 person list mm. that, you know, has already consumed your content. It's not a list that you bought. These people are on messenger and there's a high open rate, high click through rate. That to me is insane um, because wow. it took me a year to build a 5,000 person email list. <laughs> <laughs> So how long did it take you to do 12,000, like three months or so? Or? Well, the first, to get to a thousand, it probably took around a month and a half, maybe two months. And then in around a month time, we went up to 12,000 because we released two books in the span of a month. Wow. So, so that was just huge. So two and a half months. And the reason I did that is I was talking to my friend, Aaron Aegis, who runs one of the best content marketing agencies in mm -hmm. Australia. And I was saying, Hey, like we had our product hunt launch went super well for us. We got over 7,000 new subscribers on messenger. Now we want to go and launch something on Kickstarter. And he was like, don't be an idiot. Like if it works, double down on it. <laughs> and I was like, Oh, that makes sense. <laughs> good call. Good call. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, that's kind of crazy. I mean, I saw the landing page you had with, with your book. I guess it was just like a great, really great content, which is a book. The platform was like product hunt and the people there were just enthusiasts of the topic. So, and it was as simple as that, right? It's as simple as, do you, I don't know if you measured it, but did you consider like having two landing pages, one for email, one for messenger and like seeing which one would opt in more? I feel like messenger would opt in more because of product hunt, but I'm not sure. I, so the problem with that is that the statistics will still be skewed because what people do on product hunt, when they see an email capture form is they'll put in, for example, my email will be Joshua G factor plus one plus four, yes. right? They start putting in all these fake emails and, or whatever it is. Right. <laughs> and that really kills your opt-in rate. And people do this all the time. They always have that fake email to get eBooks and sometimes <laughs> it's as high as 20%. So we try wow. to stay away from those people as much as possible. Mm -hmm. Granted, like email can give you some important data. Like you can actually enrich that and get, you know, people's LinkedIn profiles, whatever it may be. But for the most part, like what we do is we actually send them straight to our Facebook group whenever they opt in. Mm -hmm. So and then our Facebook group in the survey asks for the LinkedIn profile. So it solves that issue. And then oh. I have a VA go and add all them on LinkedIn to my personal uh, connection based, the personalized message. Ah, interesting. So I'm a user. I opt in for the book and then you sent, you sent me the book through messenger and then you send me an invite to the community. And then in the community, you ask for a LinkedIn profile and then you add them on there and you re-engage them through the community. You re-engage them through messenger. And sometimes I even see it through email. Is that all pretty, pretty on point? Right on point. And mm -hmm. I think the community is where a lot of the social validation comes into play. Um, and it's honestly much easier to get people to join. It's so easy to get people to join a community via messenger. Cause especially if it's a Facebook group, right? It's yeah. right there. <laughs> and if you notice that if you click on a Facebook link outside of Facebook, sometimes it pops up like an error or this could be a virus and it's cause other sites don't want, like, it's weird how it's set up, right? If you have a Facebook link such as in your Twitter bio and people click on it, it's going to I forgot what the message is that you received, but it's not a normal flow. It's almost like you're like, what is it taking me to? Oh, well, it looks yeah. like a virus. Yeah. Yeah. It, it goes like, um, you're going to a site outside of twitter.com. Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And by being able to skip over that, that's super helpful. Mm. Man, this is awesome. I mean, this is like a blueprint for anyone else who wants, who's listening and wants to start their own messenger list. They can launch on a site like product hunt. They can re-engage them through a community or whatever strategy they have and so on. I'm curious, as we wrap things up, you mentioned that 
some of the leads actually ask you to work with you and be part of your agency. Um, it, I know it's kind of, kind of hard to track every single person who comes into that, but how has like the response been like in general? Like, have you seen people really engage with the bot, like saying like they really want to work with you and are super enthusiastic? Um, I'm just curious about uh, just what you see. So it's interesting because there's people don't put in these huge long messages into Messenger. It's very short. It's like, hey, like I really loved your post. Like I would love to work with you. Right. That's as <laughs> it's as basic as it gets. Right. Nobody's gonna put in three paragraphs about why they want to work with you. So what I do is I then take it from there to email and I have a longer conversation with them over email about it. Mm. And that's been super helpful. And it's funny that that's how it works. Cause it's sort of, it's ironic, right? <laughs> it's like it's ironic. E email is more of a conversational platform and messenger I think is more of an immediate benefit platform. So mm. you can have conversation there, but it's very text-based. It's that's not. Right. Yeah. You ever thought about, oh, actually, I don't know. I was thinking when they say, hey, love to work with you, maybe take them to like a form, like a web page, what, like, what they're looking for, or maybe like a phone call with one of your team members or something. But it seems like email is like the, the choice that you guys decided to go with. Yeah, we could send them to a form. It's also, we have to, we have to like pick those keywords that we reply to, right? Yeah. The issue is that people asking like, it's, it's, always different than what you expect <laughs> <laughs> have you asked you random questions or like oh man i get so many questions especially if you do growth you're just uh, it's like hey does this growth hack still work or where can i find this growth hack it's probably i get so, like a hundred of those a week <laughs> oh, i can only imagine well awesome it seems like a really awesome flow and effective flow for you and for your business um is there anything else that I, you wish I would have asked about chatbots that might help um, the marketers and entrepreneurs watching this that I haven't asked? Yeah, so I would say a really cool thing that we do on the agency side, and this is more this is less on building your list, but it's more on if you offer chatbots as a service, which we do, mm. is we have worked with really large brands because we don't offer like Facebook marketing right away, but we offer chatbots, which we know that they're not doing. And then we go in and we, we say, hey, well, part of our chatbots is we give you a full Facebook audit. So we audit what their other agency is doing on their Facebook ad account. And then oh. that gives us room to go in and say, hey, the other agency is performing really poorly. We would love to take over that part too. So mm -hmm. most of the time, like you're not going to be able to jump into their Facebook ad account because you're competing with that agency. And if it's a billion dollar company, right, they're, they don't even want you touching it. But if you say chatbot, they're like, let's do some experimentation. Sure, do your Facebook audit um, because you're doing the chatbot, but you're auditing everything. So you yeah. give it that to them and all of a sudden they'll kick out their other agency. And that's pushed us into like conversations I never thought we would ever be in. Um, we're in a conversation right now with a billion dollar company uh, in the retail space because we offered chatbots first. That's and amazing. when they came in as a lead, all I could think about was, what do we even offer these people? Like they probably work with like these huge agencies. Like I had no idea. I was like, we, well, we can't offer Facebook or anything like that. Let's offer them. We said PR hacking and chatbots and actually got their interest because they weren't doing it. Mm. And it was hilarious. I, I, I love that. And we teach at the bot Academy and per, from personal experience, I can go up to any business or any entrepreneur and be like, Hey, I can help you with chatbots. And no, like you said, none of them have chatbots. They don't even know what it is. And when you educate them on like the 90% open rates you're getting 60% click rates, they're like blown away and they're open to experimenting. So using it as an angle, what a great idea. Great idea. Yeah. It's, it's I can't believe it. Honestly, like, <laughs> <laughs> So much fun. <laughs> One billion dollars. Wow. Um, Josh, this has been super great. Where can people find you and also find your chatbot? I'll also link these in the description below. So I'd go search for some of my books on Product Hunt. Um, we have the Banff Bible and then we have LinkedIn Influencer. LinkedIn Influencer is the latest one. It's act it's so cool. It talks about all the news on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. And highly suggest you download it. And then from there, you'll be prompted to join the community and you'll be fully entrenched into our sales funnel. <laughs> <laughs> I love how you're transparent though. Um, <laughs> you're giving value. So like your stuff is legit, man. That's awesome. Thank you. I appreciate it. Okay. I'll link everything of those things below. So go say hi to Josh through Messenger. Him and his team will respond back to you. And Josh, thank you so much for your time. Yeah, thank you. Cheers.
Cheers.